All right. Thanks everyone for jumping in. Uh, as usual, we have plenty of stuff to go through. Uh, but first of all, like just a bit of encouragement. We are uh, doing something amazing in terms of reorganizing the PM uh, uh, structure. And obviously we are facing many organizational challenges as we're growing to 800 people. And it's, it's insane. I'm pretty sure we're gonna hit 1,000 very soon. And no one has ever done that so fast in a such short uh, manner. So yeah, just brace yourself for some changes, some organizational uh, guidance, and you know, just a bunch of experiments because a lot of what we're doing right now is just science, just you know, taking some experiment, seeing the results. If it works, continuing to build on top of it. If it doesn't, throwing it away. So also don't feel too attached to any of the current processes because they may not exist in, in a couple of days from now. All right, so discussing PM challenges, need a team leader to drive PM. And this is a thing that uh, we've been discussing internally. It seems like we would benefit a lot from someone who is a high level kind of manager and can potentially help us uh, create the structure for a more efficient uh, PMing within the teams, within the onboarding and other places. Uh, me, Daniel, and Alessia have been creating some, you know, bits here and there, but we need someone to take all of that and kind of tell us what's a, what's a, a good process for, for that. So let's try to identify that, that person. And uh, that's a task, by the way. We, we need to, to identify that person. Uh, hopefully some people on the call are able to help us. Is there anyone that would volunteer for that? Anyone? Okay. No one. Then we'll figure out uh, the responsible person after the call. Mm, maybe I can try for now, and then we will uh, when we will find somebody who can do it because I have a lot of small tasks already. Sounds great. Sounds like the, the best strategy for right now. Cool. So the next ask is actually kind of related to that, but also a very fragmented ask for a person that could help us be that, uh, you know, or be that maintenance per person for our main Trello board. Basically someone who can just uh, see all the follow-up actions and follow-up items that we're going to discuss on the call today or discussed on the yesterday call and jump in and figure out which tasks are still relevant, clean it up, archive, and basically make sense of the overall main board. Is there a person that has experience with, uh, you know, project management systems and is willing to, to take on this um, crazy task? Uh, Daniel, you're muted. Sorry, this computer's cranky. Is that, uh, can you hear me? Yep. Okay. Um, the uh, communications can handle that reasonably well if we have, but this is vital, if people can check the Trello uh, guidelines that got posted somewhere, and if each card has at least one member, and if no one else, just the person who put the card there, then that gives us someone who we can check in with. And so the hardest thing is when we're going through the boards, because we're starting to try to do that, there'll be some where it's like, oh, this is really interesting. We need to talk to someone about this, but there's no person. So we don't have any idea who to talk to, to, to move something forward. Okay. So let's find that person to uh, the man uh, kind of the main board manager and figure that out after the call. All right. So the next point on the agenda is discussing human resources challenges and team needs. And I think, Daniel, you would be the best person to talk about that. Um, yeah, so we have a, a couple of the, the folks that are using those needs boards. I've mentioned before on the Trello, you now have the ability to link right to the one that's relevant to your team. One of the things that we found worked well yesterday, so at communications, we've been in badly in need of um, someone who is a Webflow webmaster and who can kind of take that on. Um, and so to, to, to get um, strategic about how you go about your selection, so, you know, we were going to the Facebook Webflow pages and looking all around for, like, who would be the perfect fit? For something like this and so I'm, I'm delighted that we have uh rohan on the call today who's agreed to, to take that on and has the webflow experience and is passionate about what we're doing 
Um, and sometimes those specific asks are a great way to go. So and draw, brought his wife to help. That's with. right, yeah. So great to have you both on board. Um, but yeah, so think about what the, the specific yeah, needs so you have are. And especially if there's people who you know who would be great to, to onboard, then then talk to them. I'm, I'm increasingly starting to talk to the people in my network to try to recruit on a team of people uh, who can do the things that I know they can do. And I'd encourage everyone to do something kind of similar to that. Um, one other thing that we need uh, that will help, this is not exactly on that, that, actually first on the HR side, if there's a big role that is that needs someone to be filling it, don't be afraid to jump into it. Um, you can always pass that torch on to someone else later, and you have a lot of people who are here to support you in taking it on. So just an encouragement to anyone, if, if you see a role and it either excites or terrifies you to take that on, but you have kind of some interest in it, go for it. It's a, it's a, it's a good way to, to, to jump in. The last thing I wanted to say is we do need, from all the people who have a need for computer resources, please um, send to communications the details, what it is that you need, why you need it, why it will help move the project forward, because we're trying to prep for doing a, a big uh, push forward on trying to get some of those resources, but we need to be able to justify what it is that we need. Sounds great. All right, so we can jump in into the team reporting. Um, I'll quickly remind the structure for the team reporting, which is high level progress, quick summary and top three tasks that are being worked on, time to results, what are the results and how soon can you show existing progress externally, and the blockers, what do you need help with? So we're going to start with risk factors team, Maya. Hi, how are you? Hey, good, good. Uh, <laughs> so basically, um, everything changes uh, drastically every day. It is a uh, really uh, trial and error method. Um, I think that uh, uh, I've implemented uh, reverse engineering. I took the bad results separate them into bad and good results and search for uh, common uh, things between uh, good results. And I uh, heavily believe that it's a semantic task. Now I completely kind of, you know, converted to believe that it's a semantic task, first of all. It's, uh, it's a combination of semantics and multi-layer multi, multi filtering. Maybe you could mention the, the high level goal of, of that so that people understand. Yeah, the high level goal is to extract uh, relevant papers, uh, conclusions and method section, and basically tell here are top relevant papers, here are their methodology, here is a, a hypothesis, here is uh, papers that uh, confirm hypothesis, and here is the papers that deny hypothesis. Something approximately of this structure, because with the process we will clearly, more clear, like define how what what is doable and what is not. Theoretically, Sounds good. Like an abstract. Go ahead, Mark. And a full, full text abstract. Mark, yes. can you repeat? Please? Sorry, it's breaking up on my end. I, I just said it sounds like an abstract, like maybe you're trying to extract structure from an abstract. No. We, we've, we've, uh, <clears throat> if it's interesting, we've built the, the following kind of methodology, okay? We, we are looking for the, uh, first of all, we've built certain semantic structure. We have a code that allows us to build n-grams. With that engrams, we are searching uh, density of the primary key keywords in the whole text. But like we want to extract, uh, uh, we want to uh, rate as a higher relevance papers that contains these keywords in research and uh, result uh, sections, research method and result sections. Um, after this is done, uh, we want to limit the results by clinical studies because it's uh, most likely will be the most relevant thing for us to have. And uh, there are quite a complicated uh, filtering process afterwards to understand like 
which belongs to what? But on a higher level, extraction, extraction and structuring, this should work. This is my assumption. Sounds good. So uh, how soon can you show some forms of, of results? Um, as soon as I find uh, a, um, a person to execute quite a complicated um, experimental task, which I will explain today on a team call, as soon as this, as this is done, I believe we can present something really meaningful. Sounds like a blocker, right? Can you communicate uh, real quick yeah. the need? Is, but like I really want to, to, to explain the task first, like verbally, because it requires some thinking and common sense. Sure. So and we will, have a call, we will have a call in like 15 minutes. Yeah. Is it you? Uh, there is Wout that wanted to jump in. Go ahead. Exactly. Um, a quick intro. I'm 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 with Connections, uh, and I'm invited by Daniel. I had a talk with Daniel and a companion of of, of mine, who is into bioinformatics. He's modeling out of this conversation we had. Some, but I heard Maya. It was Maya, wasn't it? Um, um, define kind of need for a a, a, a partner in, in clarifying this process and getting indeed a structure and and even tooling of um, this process of collecting al analyzing papers getting structure out of it uh, I'm no into it I'm in uh, it's not my expertise but I think what I've heard of it that uh, Sander van Boom all right now uh, could be a good let's say verbal partner for Maya in this to get some structure in that and offer some schemes and tooling Daniel your take on it because you you, you talk to Sandra as well I think, yeah, I think he, I... He, might, he might be helpful in this process yeah, I think it'll be great to get Sonder in, um, kind of get his, get his hands dirty in the slack, and then we can talk in more detail around, so that he can familiarize with what Maya's actually up to. There, uh, you know, she's, she's got a good team working on some of that. Um, and, then, and then, yeah, I'm excited to, we're going to try to get a call going, in the same way we are with Agnes Dye, we'll get a call going with Sander, so that we can, we can see what the stuff he's doing, how that, how that may, may benefit what we're up to here as well. Thanks, Luke. All right. Sounds great. Good. Thank you all for, for jumping in. I highly recommend you joining the call uh, in, uh, in 13 minutes or a little bit later to get more context into what Maya is working on. Uh, obviously, this, this team a kind of quick summary and report is not um, able to cover all the details. So that's why we are branching out into specific goals for different teams. All right. So let's... I think it, it can be a task as well, right? Yep. I agree. All right, and is there anyone that can help us with that? Can you identify, sorry, what, what's the specific task there again that we're looking for the person for? Alessia? Uh, no, I meant that uh, the, uh, to connect this person to Maya's team mm -hmm. is uh, something yeah, there that has we to be... not forget about. Someone that should oh. onboard uh, Wout to the team and introduce him. Yes, yeah, so I, I, I can introduce Wout to the team Perfect. and then we'll, we'll figure out the standard piece. Too. Sounds good. All right, so let's jump to the next team uh, report. Uh, uh, how geography affects virality. Daniel. All right. Hi, everybody. So we are just proceeding with uh, our tasks, cleaning up some codes and so on. So not much to report today. Sounds good. Uh, no blockers? No, mm, today we're fine. All right, sounds good. Next team, transmission, Christine. Hi, um, yeah, pretty much like yesterday. Um, we're really close to, you know, finalizing the search engine and the recommendation system. Um, yeah, but I think I found that our team is a little distributed uh, across all over the place, like uh, we have our core people 
on the channel, but we are still working with um, Dan and working with um, NLP channel. Um, so yeah, it's uh, I think we do need like uh, some <laughs> coordination, organizer, like someone to uh, help us uh, put everything together. So it's such especially uh, uh, for planning for the Kego submission, I think. Um, it would be helpful for like a, a person to, you know, push us to finish up things and put things together, yeah. Sounds good. Have you had a chance to fill out that need on the needs sheet? Is that uh, working for you? Needs sheet, uh, probably, yeah, that probably I, yeah, did, haven't done that. It's, uh, I, w I would uh, ask you or Daniel later on, on the, you know, the specifics. Sounds good. Sounds great. And again, if you see as a team leader that the current needs structure, needs uh, spreadsheet is not working for you, is it like too hard to understand or it takes too much time? Just let us know and we'll restructure it and throw it away if it, if it doesn't work for you. All right, so, sounds good. Let's jump to the next team and uh, vaccines, Dan Sosa. Hey everybody, uh, so yesterday, Ben Jones and I had a nice productive conversation with Arthur about what the final submission was actually gonna look like and kind of logistics with taking this big code base that we have and putting it all into one nice little Kaggle uh, presentation essentially. So we kind of synced up on that front and now Ben Jones is starting to implement what that final notebook is gonna kind of look like. And that's gonna be just the basis of our pipeline and we'll just bake in the complications to that to make it more, uh, more accurate and robust and informative, et cetera. Besides that, uh, Hillary and Stefano Ranci on my team also had a nice discussion about some like treatment related projects. And so we're gonna catch up with what the treatments team is doing because I think there's a lot of overlap in what both teams are thinking about. Um, so that, that was a fun conversation. Uh, as Christine mentioned, yeah, the annotators with Iman's team are getting started on the annotating, so that's awesome. Um, we're just doing a little pilot round to see that there's no like confusion or anything and talk about what was tricky with that annotation spreadsheet. And uh, that, that's all we have, no blockers right now. Uh, quick ask, uh, could you please share the, that annotation process or sheet or whatever structure that you have? with me uh, or in the team leaders channel because there are other teams that will be facing the same uh, process like um, the basically involving human experts in in labeling papers so let's try to figure out something that works for everyone sure totally sounds good yeah absolutely all right uh sounds like great progress obviously there it it sounds like we need to get better in terms of communicating needs figuring out the needs and having people that can actually fulfill those needs and help teams. So we'll, we'll try to get better on that today. All right, the, the next piece, discussing Kaggle submissions guidelines. And uh, as Dan mentioned, we had a productive call with Vaccine's team. I recorded a call and sent it to the team leaders channel uh, for team leaders to review kind of the, the things that we talked about, but basically, we need to make sure that we comply to the Kaggle guideline submissions. Uh, though I did post a discussion uh, on Kaggle forums and asked uh, Anthony, uh, CEO of Kaggle, to clarify how much we can deviate from those. And he basically said that as much as you think is useful for, for the current um, you know, scope of work. Because first of all, we want to create something useful and it's not about the legalities uh, of the platform where we're doing it. All right. So the next item, oh, we're, we're out of items for discussion. We still have five minutes for uh, general Q&A and maybe someone from the admin team or communications or project management wants to jump in. Please speak up. All right. Maybe uh, we can quickly go through tasks we have now maybe somebody oh. is ready to take them true um maggie um can you um list out all the follow-up uh, actions that we've uh gone through just to summarize and figure out if there are responsible people um so we spoke about the 
uh, manager for tasks. Um, so Alicia volunteered for now. Yeah. Okay. Uh, then we spoke that we need maintenance person for task bar. So that's still not done. Okay. I think. Um, you also mentioned something about different calls of different teams. So I think that needs to be put in place so that teams are communicating. Um, then we spoke about Maya mentioned that she needs somebody uh, to help with the papers and she's going to speak about it more in her meeting. Um, Christine Chen mentioned that she needs help with organizing everything together. Mm -hmm. And uh, we also spoke about identifying teams needs and fulfilling them in general. Sounds great. So if you can uh, go ahead and put these uh, action items into the main Trello board, that would be great after the call. And we'll basically figure out the, the next steps and responsible people. Sounds okay. good? Yeah. All right. Sounds great. Um, again, we're trying to iterate this process with the follow-up actions. So far, it seems like it's working. Uh, big thanks to Alessia for uh, prompting me to do this process. It seems like the most scalable way to, to manage this. And uh, yeah, let's just figure out something that, that works and benefits us all. All right, sounds good. Thank you so much everyone for jumping in. As always, stay healthy, stay energized, and we, we need you for the long term. So please don't burn out, do not stretch yourself, and be mindful of, um, of the you know, extremely stressful environment that we're living in right now. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank all right, you. thanks guys. Bye. Thank you.